Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. I'm going to be talking about Azure Governance and Azure Arc. First of all, I want to say thank you to Lisa for this opportunity and thank you for inviting me along to be part of this 12 days of Azure Stack and Azure Arc event. I really do appreciate it. For those of you wondering where my Christmas festivities is, I do have my favourite Christmas t-shirt on and for those that know, no. <laughs> Now, in terms of this video, we're going to be talking about, as I said, Azure Governance and Azure Arc. So when we think about governance, there is often a misconception that we're talking about controlling people, about stopping them doing something that they want to do um, or are allowed to do. And that's really not what we want to talk about in terms of governance. Governance is about not stopping people doing what they do, but looking at the organizational benefits of having some kind of guardrails in place. Now, someone once did an analogy talking about Azure governance and guardrails as when you're driving along a road and you have maybe a, a cliff face at the side, we do have those guardrails that stop us or hopefully stop us from falling off the cliff and doing something that we shouldn't do or could potentially be harmful for us. And I think that's what we need to think about in terms of governance. Governance is about those guardrails, about not necessarily stopping us from doing something, but helping us stay on the right path and staying within our organizational guidelines or commitments that we have to have. And if we think about organizations in the IT world or in business world, there are often lots of regulatory compliance needs that people need to comply with, whether that be storing their data in a specific country because of um, regulatory compliance reasons, or maybe they just don't want to use a certain, say, public cloud um, data center because it's more expensive than other ones as well. There are lots of reasons to try and put guardrails in place. And I think guardrails and governance is something that a lot of organizations now are actually adopting and having a look at, especially when we actually look at things like Azure, where things like the Azure landing zones and the cloud adoption framework, those methodologies and frameworks have a lot of governance built into them. And with that mindset, you're starting off your Azure environments with the right mindset of having the right guardrails or governance in place. Now, inside your Azure environment, Azure policy plays a massive part in terms of providing or enabling that governance to be deployed within your environment. If I think back to the very first time that I used the product back in 2018 for a customer event and I was looking at it, I actually found an old blog post that I wrote about it. The product has grown massively and the features and functionality have grown as well with that, along with what the customers are asking for and trying to solve those problems that people are coming up with um, within their Azure environments. Now, recently, we've had the announcement of Azure Arc. Well, not so recently anymore, but Azure Arc is now a key piece when we look at our environments, when we look at designing how we implement Azure alongside our existing environments, whether that be your own data center that's living in, maybe in the same office block as the rest of your staff, or if you're already using another public cloud like AWS or GCP, Azure Arc can help bring and consolidate everything into one place really making that Azure um, environment the control plane, the one-stop shop for doing everything. And I think that's very key as we see more customers look towards the hybrid um, implementation of environments. Now, one of the best features that I love about Azure Arc is being able to extend that governance and being able to use things like Azure Policy to extend the governance, the guardrails that you already have in place for your Azure environment beyond Azure. Before I start to talk about maybe the use cases for Azure Arc and Azure Policy, I want to make sure that you're aware that when you implement Azure Policy and Azure Arc together, there is actually a charge for it. Um, now, I think on um, the documentation, it was roughly saying about six dollars, US dollars per server per month for things that you implement with Azure Arc and Azure uh, Policy or Azure Policy guest configuration, which also includes things like Azure Automation, change tracking, inventory and state configuration. So be mindful of that when you are like, actually designing your solution that there is a charge for this, because I think we've all got into um, the mindset that some th services within Azure are free. This one isn't when you're looking at using Azure Policy and Azure Arc together, there is often a charge. So be aware of that just for your financial planning and budgeting as well. 
Now, as your art and as your policy can work together in harmony to try and make your life a little bit simpler in terms of applying those guardrails and making so there's consistency beyond Azure um, for your environment. Things like making sure that your Azure monitor or Azure security agents are installed on your non-Azure servers, whether that be a Windows or a Linux box, can be applied through Azure policy. Or you can just get an overview of what's happening so you can see those non-compliant servers and you can potentially do the install of the monitor agent or the security agent manually. One of the more complex use cases with Azure Arc and Azure Policies is around private link. I'm going to read out a bit of the detail here because there's a lot of information there and I definitely don't want to get it wrong for you. Now with the Azure Arc private link scope within Azure Policy, and it's a preview feature at the moment, it allows you to connect private endpoints to an Azure resource, in this case an Azure Arc enabled server. This means that you can connect privately to Azure Arc without opening any public network access. So that's very key. You're not opening up a public network access between your Azure Arc enabled servers and your Azure resources. So that means that you're securely connecting your private on-premises network to Azure Arc using Azure um, Express Route and private link. And there's a policy that helps make that compliant, make sure that that's in place. So that if someone's setting something up and they haven't thought about that, or they're not aware of that, or they haven't caught up in that, or they've just maybe had not enough coffee that morning, Azure policy can actually help you make sure that things like that are staying secure and within the guardrails of your company's organizational needs. There are lots of use cases between Azure Policy and Azure Arc, but it's a key thing to have a look at. Make sure if you've got governance in place within your Azure environment using Azure Policy, but you're also extending that to your Azure Arc servers and beyond as well. So yeah, enjoy people. I hope you've enjoyed this video and do hit that like button if you have enjoyed this content.